Everyone, today I'm speaking with Dr. Michelle Dallas, who wrote, directed, produced, and edited, along with her dedicated team, her documentary, Crossing the Waters, The Impact of Bahamian Pioneers in South Florida. The film delves into the rich history of Bahamian pioneers and their vast contributions to South Florida, especially in Miami's Coconut Grove where early Bahamian settlers played pivotal roles in developing and growing the vibrant community by sharing their skills in trading, farming, sponging. Am I saying that correctly? Sponging? Yes, yes. All right. Fishing, masonry, and wrecking on the New River. Dr. Dallas is also an accomplished dentist with a thriving practice in South, South Florida and was even appointed to the state of Florida's Board of Dentistry for two terms by the governor. Dr. Dallas, it is a pleasure to be able to speak with you today. Well, it's a pleasure to be here as well. Wonderful. Um, so I guess we could jump right in. Uh, what motivated you to put this documentary together? Because a lot of this information is really new to me. I even did some research just to learn a little bit more about the history of Coconut Grove. And I found some amazing things that I never knew about. Um, and I'm sure after this interview, <clears throat> the same will go for many of our viewers. So what made you want to uncover and share this information with the world? You know, I grew up in a very, I was, first of all, I was raised in Fort Lauderdale. I grew up in Fort Lauderdale, was born in Fort Lauderdale. And I grew up in a very vibrant area that was uh, African-Americans and, of course, uh, Bahamian. And um, my godparents were Bahamian people. And uh, I grew up very close to the Bahamian culture, the Bahamian history, and just Bahamian people. Um, so in that community, I believe that if I could say we were one, one united, you know, uh, there was no differences at that particular time. Uh, we were close knit and we looked out for each other. And what I wanted to do was I look back on my childhood and sometimes we do that as we get older. And I wanted to honor people who I respected as a child and still respect who are no longer here with us, but, um, I had a lot of respect for, and, I wanted to share my story. And so this story, which gives this historical in one sense, you know, which is factual in another sense, but it it's also emotional in another sense, and it relates to me personally. That's amazing. And um, that makes me think about like Coconut Grove in Miami specifically. It seems to be really pivotal to the documentary and the history of Bahamians in South Florida. Uh, today, it's and I guess you could say it's an upscale sort of chic neighborhood that has been home to many celebrities. And looking back at the history of its beginning, um, where Bahamians were so pivotal in building it up, how involved are they in that community today? Um, I think they're very involved and I think they're going to become more involved. I mean, just recently in July of 2022, uh, Dr. Enid Pinckney and of course, uh, Congresswoman, Frederica Wilson were very active or at least uh, proactive in getting the Coconut Grove area renamed to um, Little Bahamas. Mm. So being that that's a fact, uh, and the, the, of course the city of, Port, city of Miami, I'm sorry, and the commissioners supported that event, uh, that's a big deal. That's a really, really big deal and a big thing. And I think um, economically, we're going to see probably some growth there, some emergence of you know, renovations and buildings and what have you. And, and I, I think I think it's a great honor uh, for something of that nature to happen. Yeah. Nice. And if I'm remembering correctly, just this uh, this month, right, The uh, they named February 4th um, Na National Bahamian Day. In okay, it was Bahamian American Day. Oh, wow, that's interesting that you're aware of that. Here in Broward County, our um, mayor, Nan Rich, she named uh, February 4th, which was a Sunday. My mm -hmm. event was held on that third, February 3rd, which was a Saturday, and the fourth, uh, the wow. following day was Bahamian American Day for February 4th, yes. And we're hoping that that will continue, um, you know, in the future. And I... I, I just want to say this, and I don't quite know how to say it, but you'll be surprised how many people truly are Bahamians or Bahamian mm. descendants here in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beach, Tampa, what have you. You'll be so surprised how many people uh, have a Bahamian connection, you know, mm. a biological connection, and are just really enthused about, you know, the whole the whole thing, the whole effort, put it that way. 
Wow. So concerning your documentary, do you delve into um, how racism affected early Bahamian settlers, if if at all, that it, it did? Um, because I believe that the first Black Bahamian settlers arrived in Coconut Grove in about 1889 to work at the Bayview House, which is now the Peacock Inn Hotel. Right. Um, what was their like integration and adjustment to, to the community like? And I asked that like thinking about like the Windrush era in in the UK where so many people from the Caribbean were enticed to come over to the UK, um, you know, because they were promised certain certain things if they came over and and uh, helped build up the UK's economy after the war. And a lot of them felt cheated and, you know, like they, they felt like they didn't get the things that they were promised. Do you think the the Bahamian, those first Black Bahamian settlers in Coconut Grove felt something like that? Or was their, um, was their arrival a little bit easier? Well, I mean, let's first deal with slavery. Mm -hmm. um, the first, you know, a lot of the Bahamians that came over from West Central Africa, that's where they came from. And in coming to the Bahamas, in one sense, uh, whether they were a lot of us people of color, black people, we were just kind of dropped off at different areas. The, the ship dropped us off in different areas, put mm -hmm. it that way. But the Absolutely. those that arrived in the Bahamas, you got to remember that unlike, say, Florida or the United States, um, the difference was that they weren't beaten, if I can use that word. Mm -hmm. Here in the States, we were, you know, uh, brutalized a little bit more, you know, physically, okay? but they were subser subservient as well. So uh, they were servants and subservient, um, uh, whether, whether it was in the Bahamas or whether it was in, in uh, Florida. Their coming to Florida in one sense was due to uh, possibly exploring and wanting something different and wanting something better. There was also, uh, if I can say rumors that there was treasures out in the sea, you know, say there was a ship record or, or one or two or whatever, and let's go see what we can find. So the right. Bahamians were explorers, but um, coming here, I would say as far as race, it, it was what it was in the 1880s is when they came into, into Miami and it was, was what it was. So there was still racism there, you know, uh, but um, I think the people had a lot of determination and they strived and, and uh, moved forward and accomplished a, a lot of things. And in fact, I think with them coming here, they build up Miami quite a bit. And of course it is what it is today because of Bahamians. Mm. Thank you for that um, information. Um, so how has or hasn't the contributions of Bahamians as well as Bahamian history and culture been preserved in South Florida today? Well, in answering that, I would have to say one of the biggest or largest or most popular uh, museums in Miami is the Villa Vizcaya. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of Bahamians, we have that Vizcaya. They built the Vizcaya. Uh, then, of course, you know, you have the Peacock Inn, which they built. So mm -hmm. I, I think uh, we preserved and we still have other, you know, uh, buildings that I can't even name, began to name. But uh, we have a lot here because of, of, of their efforts. You know, they, when they first came over, they understood sponging. They understood um, how to use coal and, 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 and use coal for the benefits of construction or the mm. benefits of masonry. So uh, there's a lot that they contribute to uh, uh, Miami and to Fort Lauderdale, even in the areas of, and I think you named it early in the areas of farming, you know, uh, they were big time farmers. They were well known as far as uh, well versed in how to farm. That's what they did in, in, in over in, uh, in the Bahamas. And if you think about it, some of the things that we take for granted each and every day, like a mango, you know, we can't wait for mango season. Okay, sure, mm -hmm. you can go to the grocery store and find a mango and find us, it might say Honduras or whatever it may say, but a lot of our early fruits, you know, fruits that we still enjoy, like guavas, mangoes, uh, a lot of those things came from the Bahamas. So the contributions, we have to consider not only the... Uh, physical infrastructure that was built in Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, but we also have to consider uh, what we eat. You know, a lot of that came right. from, from Bahamians. Yeah. Very interesting. Thank you. Um, 
what are some of the stories in your documentary that stood out to you the most? And what message would you like people to take away from your film after watching it? Uh, I think one of the biggest messages, and, and this is something personal to, to me, often mm -hmm. we hear about, especially in the Black community, we hear about the same people over and over. And I would like for everybody to realize that it takes a community, it takes a village. And I can't stress that enough, that it takes a, a number of us to make things what it is today or make things better you know so i hope that regardless of race that we can accept and we can acknowledge people and acknowledge their contributions because mm. at this point i mean time has passed and when i say time has passed you know there's this technology everything evolves in a sense and to some extent that makes it even better because with technology you know things we can perhaps uh, get to things quicker or create things quicker or faster, if you want to say that. But the same, in the same note, it takes people. It takes people. Right. Right. And so I just wish that we can come together um, and accept that, you know, and appreciate it, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so I think that's all I have. I do want to thank you for putting this documentary documentary together because a lot of times the the contributions of caribbean um islands people from the caribbean are not readily acknowledged in right. in america and right. you know there's so many different people that have contributed to building this country up um whether it's like you said you know farming and sponging and masonry or entertainment I mean, okay. we we the the Caribbean has permeated American history, and a lot of times it doesn't get the just due. It doesn't get the um, attention and 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 accolades that it deserves. So, okay. you know, in you putting this film together, it, it's just another part of of uncovering stories that a lot of people have never heard or didn't know about. So, you know, uh, on behalf of Caribbean today, we really do appreciate that effort. Can you tell us when? Um, like more information on the film when we would be able to check it out. I know it's it it's probably doing the the the, the circuit now where you're you're kind of showing it at different um, film festivals and things of that nature. Well, you know, we we premiered at a film festival, Fort Lauderdale Film Festival, November fourth of mm -hmm. 2023. Then recently, as you're aware, that we we just had a it was like standing room over 500 people at the mm -hmm. African American Library. Um, research library uh here in fort lauderdale and that was on february 3rd nice, uh, we nice. are discussing with uh w uh wlrn we're discussing something with them pbs to to see if we can do something with them also we're talking with apparently there's an african-american library which i've never visited but it's in atlanta so we're talking with them as well so we'll see what happens you know i'm excited about it one of the things that i do want to say in and, and I thought you brought up a good point that that Caribbean um, people, Caribbean culture is, has been so prominent in this area, uh, South Florida per se. But uh, I wanted to stress too that one of the reasons why even in, in this movie or this film, uh, not only did I have godparents who were Bahamian, not only did I come up in the community that had a lot of Bahamians uh, at that particular time, but the proximity, I can't stress mm -hmm. that enough. When you look around, why isn't she talking about Jamaica? Why isn't she talking about Trinidad or what have you? But uh, not only from a personal aspect, but from a, a geographical aspect. If we look at um, Miami to 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 mm. uh, South Florida, you know the distance. If we look at Palm Beach, uh, let's take Freeport West End. We're fifty miles. We to, you know to to the coast of you know Florida. We when we take uh, Bimini, and it's just, it's just that the Bahamas, their proximity was so so oh. close. So it could have been mm -hmm. any island, any place, or what have you. But with, you know, the, the Bahamians were closer in proximity, and and that probably made their route a little easier, and their curiosity mm. a little easier, and their trips, you know, back and forth a little easier. And of course, like I said earlier, sometimes you would hear that, oh, there's a ship or something that there's a wreckage <laughs> and there's some gold and treasures and we got to get out mm -hmm. there, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. Thank you so much for agreeing to this interview. Thank this you fun. for having me. Are yes. you kidding? What and I can't. Here? What an I honor. Can't. 
I can't wait to to see the film. I really the trailer was amazing. Reading the information about it, um, I'm really excited to check it out. So okay, uh, thank you again for for putting it together, and hopefully we get to speak again after you know it 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 makes a splash on PBS. It hits the the theaters, and you know okay. the people really get to check it out. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. You have a great night. You too, hun. Bye bye. Bye.